Jamal Lascelles, Carl Darlow, and you're watching Newcastle Fans TV. After a shaky start, Newcastle are really getting to grips with the division, having won their last three league games. And on Saturday evening, they take on Derby live on Sky Sports. Newcastle captain Jamal Lascelles is on the line now. Jamal, thanks for coming on. How's it been during the international break? Yeah, no, it's been uh, it's been fantastic. I mean, um, it would have been nice to have a game um, coming off the the end of the the Brighton game because obviously you know confidence and stuff. But um, you know, it's no harm as getting uh, getting the three days off and getting a bit of rest. And um, obviously, all our new signings and all the boys back from international uh, they're all back now. So uh, training's been lively. So we're, we're looking forward to the weekend. So Rafa Benitez has given you three days off. Do you think that would have been the case if you'd not beaten Brighton? Um, I'm not too sure to be honest, but um, thankfully we won and uh, we got we, we got the three days off. So um, you know, I think a few of the boys went went to the gym and worked hard, and all the players were on international break. So everyone's just glad to be back now. With the form you were showing going into the break, are you really chomping at the bit to get going again? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, we didn't start off like we wanted to. Obviously, the team's really starting to gel. I think. The way we played the other day just goes to show our, how how quickly we've um, gelled together as a team. Uh, the new signings have been excellent for us. Um, so you know we're just we're just all raring to go, and the confidence is is sky high at the minute. Were you worried after losing your first two games, or did you just need a bit of time to find your feet? No, we wasn't worried. I mean, it's the championship. It's like the other day, Burton beat Derby. No one would really say that would happen, but. You know, games can go in your favour some days, but um, we just got to make sure on the training pitch we do everything um, at our best so that come match day we're all ready and we'll have no excuses. It was a significant win over Brighton, wasn't it? Even though it's really early in the season against a real promotion rival and you scored a fantastic headed goal. What's it like having the noise of 50,000 fans in your ears after scoring at St James's? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's something that you wouldn't really dream of. Um, it was was quite an unbelievable moment for me, and uh, you know, credit to the boys, we got the we got the three the three points on that day. So, uh, you know, Brian were a tough team, and they'll probably be up there this this season. So, I think it was crucial for us that we beat them, and um, you know, it's good good momentum going forwards against another big team on Saturday. And at the age of just 22, what does it mean to you to be captain of Newcastle? I mean, it is unheard of, really, but I've always said that age is just a number, and um, you know, obviously, Rafa sees something in me, which which is a massive thing for me for for him to to uh, show the faith and you know show the trust in me. So um, yeah, I know it's um, it's a, it's very proud for me, and I'm I'm pleased, and I'll do whatever it takes to to keep this team going forwards. What did Rafa say to you when he made you captain? Um, well, I sort of knew, you know, in pre-season he gave me the armband a few times, and. Uh, he asked me questions about like, oh, we need to set up a fine sheet and we need to do this and do that, and it, he'd refer, it relate back to me and uh, ask me all the questions. So I think he was sort of testing me in pre-season, yeah. and then um, I think a week before the first first game of the season, he said to me, oh, how do you feel about being captain? And I was obviously over the moon with that comment, yeah. and of course I said, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to taking on the responsibilities, and that's how it went. Just how demanding is he? I mean, Stephen Gerrard very famously said it was his career ambition to get a well done from Rafa Benitez. Is is he like that? No, he's he's hundred percent telling the truth. Though I mean, when the guy speaks, everyone listens. He's he's not just a great coach, great manager. He's also a massive presence, and um, you know, he's 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 easy to talk to as well. His doors always open. He he gets involved with the lads. He has a bit of banter, but when we're on the training pitch, everything's serious and. Um, you know, if players aren't doing, if players aren't doing their job, then he's not afraid to drop somebody and and tell them as well. So he's got a good balance, and obviously he's shown it in the past with with what he's won and what he's done. So I saw Alan Shearer sent you a tweet to say congratulations and good luck for the season. I mean, what did you think when that popped up on your timeline? Yeah, I mean, again, that's that's another that was another like a moment where I was like, wow, you know, Alan <laughs> Shearer's tweeting me, and I think in the end he, he put captain as well. So yeah. I mean, it is a bit, um, it is a bit breathtaking when things like this happen. But um, I'm not going to get too carried away with myself. I mean, my 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 ambition at the minute is to is to 
obviously take take games step by step, but ultimately, you know, we need to be lifting the trophy during the season. So, um, you know, the boys know what we need to do, and obviously, Rafa is going to set out what we need to do, and we're all listening, and we're all going to respect it and back it all. And Rafa clearly saw your leadership qualities as soon as he arrived last season when you famously had a go at some of the older pros last season that took some guts I mean, what was the tipping point that made you more vocal? Um, I mean it was quite a frustrating season for me last last year because obviously I didn't really play too much at the start but I got given a chance towards the end um, but I don't know I don't want to dig any players out um, but obviously if, I'm, if I see something that, which I'm unhappy about and I'm thinking and I will say it so um, I think upset one or two players that day, but I don't know. I felt like I got a reaction from the team, and um, it's only in the best interest. I'd only do it because because I care and I want to win. I won't do it, you know. I'll just just to be silly. I'll do it because you know I mean it, and I think it's the best thing for the team at that moment in time. Yeah. So it's Derby on Saturday. You were born there. You're an ex-Forest player, of course. Is this a game with a bit of extra spice for you? Um. No, not really. Obviously. Being at Nottingham Forest since I was young, yeah, Derby were the team that were sort of our rivals. But obviously now I play for Newcastle United, so I just see Derby again as, a, as an, another championship team. So I'm just going to approach it the same way as it was um, the other week against Brighton. It's, it's no difference to me now. Derby have struggled so far, haven't they? Just one win and one league goal to their name so far. I mean, have you got to still be wary with the quality they've got? Do you think they'll still be up there despite that slow start? Um. I think they will. Derby are a good team. Um, you know they're a big club as well. Uh, so we can't we can't get complacent and think oh they've only scored one goal or they've only won one game. We've got to make sure that we we prepare right for it and um, with the right professional professional manner and uh, you know we can we can beat anyone on the day if we do that correctly. And Dwight Gale and Alexander Mitrovic will be back. Christian Atsu's signed now. Daryl Murphy could make his debut, fresh from scoring for Ireland, of course, in midweek. Are you excited about your forward options now? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's frightening what we've got to offer, really. Um, you know, you see now what we played against Brighton, and that was without our two, two main strikers, really. But now we're, um, we can introduce Daryl Murphy, who's a prolific goal scorer. He's known in the Championship. And um, obviously Christian, that's who he's been about, and you can see how sharp he's in training. So I think I think signing these sort of players also brings competition. Um, so it's going to make the other players work harder, and they're going to be wanting to be wearing their shirt come match day because Rafa can only pick 11 players, and we've got such a big, talented squad in depth. So um, it's going to be interesting to see what the starting line will be. Are you expecting a few bumps and bruises from Daryl Murphy in training over the course of the season? Yeah, me and him were at it today in, uh, in training, <laughs> but you know it's, it's all uh, it's all going to stay on the pitch, and uh, you know we'll both give it each other. So you know he's, he's a good striker; that's his game, and um, hopefully he can score score a few goals for the for the club. Do you think the early weeks of the season though have perhaps shown that it, it's not going to be as straightforward as as many predicted for you? Yeah, of course. I mean, I said it since the start of the season. It's not going to be, it's not going to be walkover. The championships are tough for me. You know, we've got a game Saturday, then another game on um, Tuesday. So players have got to be fit, and I think keeping players fit is massive as well. Um, so yeah, we all know what we're sat out for, and uh, everyone's in the same direction as each other. Thanks, Jamal. All the best at the weekend. All right. Thank you very.